Hi and welcome to another how-to video from catalator.com. This video is going to go through the procedure for using Corel Draw to get your design ready for laser and vinyl cutting. So we're going to start off in Corel Draw. Corel Draw is a vector drawing program similar to Adobe Illustrator. It allows us to create vector files which we need in order to make a machine move in physical space. So to get going with your design, we want to start a document. So we choose File, New, and then we want to select the size for our document template. I'm going to use 24 inches wide by 18 inches high. It's important to use RGB for the primary color mode for laser cutting, as this is the color scheme that the laser keys off of for its operations. I select OK and now we see the document window that we're going to start doing our artwork in. So in moving around in Corel Draw, in this top left hand corner here we have the pick tool. The pick tool is your friend. It's the place to come back to if you get lost or you're trying to figure out how to select an object and what to do with it. Always come back and select the pick tool. So then we can start creating some geometry. In the left hand side menu here we have a rectangle tool so we can merely select that and then draw a rectangle. Seems pretty straightforward. There are a number of control points around that rectangle as well as a center point. We can pick it up by the center, move it around, we can stretch the rectangle using these control points and then we can also come up to the object size here and actually see what size that rectangle is. Now if we were searching for wanting a particular size we can go and enter that in. Say I wanted a rectangle 20 inches wide by 10 inches high, I can enter that in, hit enter and now I've got a rectangle of the size that I specified. Note this little padlock here. So when we lock that padlock the width to height ratio of the object that we're doing, working on, is fixed. This way if we come in and say, well maybe I wanted an 18 inch wide rectangle, I just enter 18, hit enter, and it automatically scales down and maintains the width to height ratio. Next I can do operations on a shape when I have it selected. I can choose object properties and I can, for example, change the outline line thickness. If I want to laser cut it and actually cut along that line, then I want to choose hairline for the thickness and red, particularly RGB red for the color. I can also go ahead and fill the object and then I can change around with the fill color if we want to. Usually for laser cutting and vinyl cutting, we tend to want just outlines rather than filled areas. There are a lot more shapes on the left hand side menu here. For example, if we want to do a circle, we can select the ellipse tool. If you just click and drag, you will draw an ellipse. But say we really wanted to have a circle. We need to hold down the control key, then click and drag and we will get a circle and it will have a center. Now suppose we want to get that circle centered in our rectangle. Well we can use guidelines. Guidelines are brought out by clicking on the ruler either at the top or left hand side of the window. You click, hold and drag and then you can see as I bring my cursor along the edge of the rectangle I now get this midpoint snap condition so I can let go of my mouse at that stage. So I've set these two guidelines at the midpoints of the rectangle. I can now select my circle, pick it up from the center and then drop it and you can see that it snaps to the center of those guide points. Now I have a circle in the middle of my rectangle. I can draw lines 
So if I come over to the left hand menu, I see there's a whole bunch of different options for drawing lines. Let's just choose a two point line for now, select that. And now I can come to a snap point, like the midpoint here. I select that by click and then holding down the left mouse button, I can now move to another snap point and release. And now I have a line drawn. So I can go from a corner to a corner. Same thing from here to here. One of the most useful tools that I've found in Corel Draw is hidden away under the Crop tool here. If I click on the little flyout triangle, we find this virtual segment delete. This is incredibly useful for being able to clean up lines and get your geometry to look the way that you want it to. So we select virtual segment delete and we see we've got this little knife. When I bring the knife over a line, what it's going to do, and that little knife goes vertical, it's going to delete a segment that goes to the nearest crossing points of some other geometry. So I can get rid of parts of this circle that I don't want, even these lines here. And now I'm left with a shape in the middle of my rectangle. So what can I do with this shape? Well, I can come back to my pick tool. I can highlight all of those entities and I can go up to object and group those objects together. So now I've got them all as a single entity. I'll put them back in the middle there. Then with that object selected, I can go edit, copy, edit, paste, and I've created a copy that I've just gone and added and right on top of my original geometry. It's now selected. I can come up to the rotation menu here and I can type in 90 and it will end up rotating that geometry around 90 degrees. Okay, let's explore some more features. So I'm going to start by deleting this geometry that we've just created. These guidelines too, I can just click on them and hit the delete key. We're now going to explore bringing in some bitmap or um, raster geometry and scanning it into a vector so we can end up cutting it uh, on the vinyl cutter or the laser. So with a blank document, I go File, Import, and I have a file, a PNG file, which I'm going to import into the document. I just click in the middle here, and now I can zoom in and have a look, and I see that this is a pixelated raster file. We can scan this and make it into a nice clean vector. With the object selected, we select bitmaps, outline trace, line art, and then it goes through and does the tracing. I see there's a couple of white regions here, so I'm going to say remove color from entire image and then say OK. Now I've got a nice clean vector file. <clears throat> I can outline that, hairline, red, and I can turn off fill. And now I can see exactly the outline that's going to be cut. Zooming back out, let's uh, have a look at the text command. So you can come over to the A on the side of the toolbar here, click on text, and I just click on the screen and I can select a font, <clears throat> font size, and I can start writing. And then just hit enter, I can carry on making several lines of text. So once I'm done, I can use the usual edit points to move the text around. I can scale it out size it to the way I want. Now this particular font I've chosen here is very thin. I can come over to the object properties. 
I can turn off fill and turn on outlining and I can see I get this outline of the text which could be laser cut or a vinyl cut depending on what you want to do but you might decide that this is a little too thin. So to go back and change the text I can edit it, I can go and highlight it and maybe I want to choose a blockier font like Serenity here, this Go Bold font. Once again I can move this around. Now once you've got the font sorted out, the text that you would like, you can do a few things. You can come up to Object and say Convert to Curves. So now it is no longer a font, it's just a curve like any other. It says here Curve. Um, and then you can go Object Break Curve Apart and now you actually have these letters as separate entities that you can manipulate and do what you want with. Okay, I'm going to undo those changes that I just made. A couple of other features to show you about. If you click on a curve entity, up here we've got a couple of mirror commands, so I can mirror this horizontally or even vertically. Finally, I can do things like put a frame around this text here. In addition, if I want to actually figure out how large something is, I can also dimension, so we can use a horizontal dimension. Click, drag, and then click again to put dimensions into the drawing. And then also in another feature, this rectangle, get back to my pick tool, this rectangle here, I can select it off of the object manager. If I put it up on the guides layer here, then it turns blue. Um, because the color of the guides layer is blue, um, the interesting thing about the guides layer is that the little printer icon is turned off. In other words, that this is a layer that won't end up printing. Um, you can also turn on or turn off the visibility of layers, the printability, and also the editability if we lock or unlock. Once we lock a particular layer, then we are unable to select the entities on that layer. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video useful. You can find out more information about what we do at our Facebook page, on our Instagram feed and our Pinterest page. There's lots of cool pictures and interesting projects for you to see there. Thanks and see you soon.